was supposed to be a rest day, but um, unfortunately, ran out of food for Ali. I didn't realize how low I was getting, so um, yeah, I've had to push forward. I was hoping to find some towns, um, a supermarket somewhere, but and, and camp before I made it to the 12 Apostles, but uh, the next main town is uh, Campbell, um, Port Campbell shopping center so that's on the other side of the 12 apostles so unfortunately just going to keep pushing forward swing by the 12 apostles and check them out but yeah not all that bad yeah we'll go see how it looks How's this? Driving along just on the outside of Joanna, stumble across this little rainforest. How cool is that? It's like cliffs all around it, it's just like a giant cavity, but got vines and everything. The things you find out here are incredible. As you continue along the Great Ocean Road, you hit Prince Town, which is the last town before the Twelve Apostles. There is a main car park to pull off the Great Ocean Road, which is full of buses and tourists. The Twelve Apostles are definitely worth stopping off and having a quick look at. Currently, there are only eight of the Twelve Apostles still standing. It is only a matter of time before these disappear into the ocean. A couple of clicks up the Great Ocean Road, you also find car parks for Lockhart Gorge, Razorback, Thunder Cave, the Baker's Oven, London Bridge, and the Gouldies. These are all unique natural attractions carved into the sandstone cliffs from the ocean and wind over many, many years. People never cease to amaze me. We're at the sixth wonder of the world, Twelve Apostles. And of all these beautiful apostles, there's a guy taking photos of a chair. <laughs> More interested in that than that. Jason Loz had some really bad news today. Um, they've been complaining about um, there being a knocking in the bottom of their motor of the Troopy for a while. Um, Jay said he's had you know, multiple mechanics trying to work out what it is. Um, earlier today, uh, they said that they the knocking was getting really bad, so they end up pulling over and having to get the car towed to Warren Warrnambool. Sorry. Um, they put it in a mechanic there, the mechanic's taken the heads off and turns out the bottom end of the motor's all, all shagged. So, RIP a motor, unfortunately. Um, I've told them I'm only about an hour out of Warrnambool, so I'll catch up with them. We'll go to the pub tonight and have a beer. But um, yeah, really terrible news for them. See if we can come up with a bit of a game plan to help them out. Hopefully they can find another vehicle or something to uh, keep pushing forward. But. Yeah, not the news you want when you're on the road. So I pushed on to Warrnambool and picked up Loz and Jace and we went out to town for dinner. After dinner, I dropped them back at their Airbnb and I went off looking for a campsite. Managed to find a nice little beach car park that was Adelaide's side of Warrnambool and only five minutes from town. We rolled into camp around 7.30 at night and it had just started to rain with more rain scheduled to come. We set up the penthouse and went to bed early. So I woke up this morning. Bit of a wet day timetable. 
So I thought, catch up on some uh, 4x4 24-7. offers several unique dispersed camping areas like this, Utah. which allow you to camp Looks next to the trail epic. with some simple conditions. And this just might be one of the wildest... Oh, so today, I think I might pack up, might go have a look around town if the rain stops. I want to try to get the first episode up online, so I need to create a YouTube channel. And then, yeah, we'll work out what the next moves are. But for now, just chilling in bed. 100% guarantee. So what you're watching right now, even watching if it's on one of those 24 gigantic yeah, HD TVs. So after the rain stopped, we packed up camp and quickly went to check out Levy's Point Beach, which is the car park we ended up camping in. So, it's Thursday, a week since I left home. Oh, a week and a day, I left uh, the Wednesday after cup day. So yeah, just over a week now. A week of being homeless, a week of living on the road. <laughs> it's been pretty enjoyable so far. Seen some pretty awesome places. Uh, I made it to Warrnambool um, along the Great Ocean Road. Um, a lot of sort of beach camping, bush camping. It's just awesome, thing, awesome sights to see out there. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this also marks, interesting fact, this also marks the longest time I've actually ever lived out of the van in a single camping trip. I call it, call it a van, the Navara, Gavnav. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Every day you sort of pick things that you can either move around in the canopy or, or move in the car to make things more accessible or the things you don't need, you sort of push them to the back of the canopy. But yeah, every day you just make little tweaks make it that much more enjoyable to live out of but um yeah so far so good very excited to see what is to come still pinching myself i've got 12 months of this still feel like i'm in this weird state of like i don't know it just doesn't feel real but bloody hell feels good After checking out the beach, Ali and I jumped in the car and we headed around to get Jason and Loz. We went into town for breakfast and walked around the town to see what it had to offer. <laughs> Thanks for brekkie guys. <laughs> Thanks for saving us. <laughs> Anytime.
So at the moment, this is how. Ali up, up, Ali up. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm gonna end up breaking my neck doing that. It's um she kicks off the car or something, I got nothing bracing myself, which isn't ideal. So I'll show you what I've come up with. Because I'm a genius. So beautiful thing about this tent is not only does the side one open, the top one opens too. And I thought about how on earth or could Ali potentially use this as a bit of a ramp? And I actually tried, and as you can see, I'm well, not sure if you can see, she kind of scratched the shit out of my bonnet with the nails, just because it was so slippery. So, I've come up with an ingenious plan. So, I went out yesterday to a hardware store. Um, there wasn't a Clark rubber in town. I was aiming for a Clark rubber. I went to a hardware store and what he had is some yoga mats or some like camping sort of yoga mats, which is exactly what I thought would work. It's grippy, um, it's soft. Ali will get grip going up the windscreen. And only problem was they're only about a 1. I think two meters long each. So I ended up having to buy two of them. They're only about $7 each um, and I just had to put them together somehow. So I've duct taped two of them together and I've made this. So, this is just a roll. You can see that there's sort of duct tape connecting them together. And I'll show you how it works. Ali, come here. Good girl. Up, 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 up. Voila. Come here. Come here. Come on. get smoother at that part, eh? <laughs> and there you have it. So, still in Warrnambool. Um, managed to get some laundry done, went to the shops, uh, went to JB Hi-Fi and actually got a, a mic which should help suppress some of the wind noise in the background, uh, which you heard on the first one. That's something I was struggling with on the uh, first episode, just getting all the sound levels right. So hopefully as I go along, that'll get better. Um, but yeah, I got a mic that um, is an external mic for the GoPro which should help. Um, just heading down to the beach at the moment, gonna meet uh, some mates of mine, which I know through the 4x4 community, uh, Haz and Mags and Luke and Ebbs. Um, they've just um, done a trip up through the Flinders Ranges, um, which is where I'm planning on going up after, um, after probably Christmas, I think I'll probably be getting up there. So very keen to hear how they found it, what they saw, what they liked, what they'd probably bypass. Um, but yeah, should be good. Probably camp with them tonight. I think we're looking at going backwards, uh, back from the direction that I came a little bit. Um, but nonetheless, be good to catch up with them, camp with them and trade stories. Howdy. Hello. How's your trip? Not too bad, hello cutie pie. Over. It's not over yet. One more day. One more day. Yeah, I know. The sound. Oh, hey. <laughs> you getting your dog sticks now, Megan? I am the dog whisperer. <laughs> Every single dog loves me. I have another dog that doesn't love me yet. <laughs> I've, had one, I've had one Roddy that didn't like me and wanted to bite me. 
Yeah, you're scary, aren't you? <laughs> arr, arr. And we're back on the road. I'm heading in the wrong direction, but we're back on the road. We're heading back to Port Campbell for the night. Uh, as mentioned, just come back with these fellas who have done a lot of what I'm aiming to do, um, sort of over Christmas time. So yeah, it'd be good to uh, good to chat to them about it and see what highlights they've seen. On the way back to Port Campbell, we stopped in at the Grotto and London Bridge to have a quick squeeze. I actually missed these the first time I came through as I hightailed it through to Warrnambool to catch up with Gloz and Jace. So it was awesome to be able to stop and actually check these out. and Meg's just left with Luke and Ebbs. They're heading home today. Today was the last day of their tour, two and a half months, uh, through the Flinders Ranges and uh, over to the EP. Um, it was awesome to catch up with them and just get all the highlights of their trip. Um, they're pretty much done what my sort of next movements are gonna be. So yeah, it's good to see what parts were there sort of stand out, their highlights. They've given me some recommendations as to what I can do through the Flinders Ranges and over the EP. Um, sounds exciting. I'm really excited to get up there, uh, come into some nicer weather. Uh, temperature will obviously be going up a fair bit. But um, yeah, should be good. Uh, I think the plan for today, I did some editing in town um, in Port Campbell, just did a cafe for a little bit, that's some Wi-Fi there which was good. Um, I think the plan today is to go back through Warrnambool, I've got to return a hard drive which I bought to store all my footage because it's not actually working on my Mac, so drop that off um, and then the plan is I think I'm going to go just to the other side of Warrnambool, there's some, like, um, some more parks that I think I'll be able to find a camp at. Um, I'll go explore some of that sort of um, back bushland that runs along the back of the, uh, the beach and yeah, see if I can find another camp, but yeah, it's pretty much all we've planned. Ali's just chilling, having a bit of a nap, but yeah, let's see how we go. Driving between Port Campbell and Warrnambool, there are some wind turbines that are slightly inland. I took a bit of a detour to check these out up close. These wind turbines are monstrous and definitely worth the detour. They are very impressive to see right up close. After a brief stop in Warrnambool, I continued on to Port Ferry, a stunning beachside town known for its beautiful beaches and port. The main beach in Port Campbell stretches for kilometres along the shore it consists bright white sand, turquoise water, and all in all, just a beautiful beach. So just rolled into Saw Pit Campground. 
it's a um, free campsite, um, just it's probably five minutes inland from the main road that runs along the coast. This is it. A whole bunch of like different spots. Over there you can camp up right next to like the fire pits. Down here you gotta camp a little bit away, but I don't normally like camping right on the uh, fire pit anyway. You end up getting smoke all through your tent, so yeah, this is us for the night. And we're sorting our dinner tonight. What's on the menu? We're having steak, broccolini with a fire cooked potato and my famous blue cheese sauce. Oh yeah. Bush Tucker. Steak, spud, broccolini, blue cheese. Shit. So this campsite was pretty good. There was a few people around here last night. There's still a fair few people here, but a lot of people clearing out. I think a lot of people come here just for the weekend. Thinking I might just have a rest day, catch up on some editing. Already been for a run this morning. And after that, I'll uh, yeah, just chill here. There was a um, there's a raceway. You can hear you could hear the cars last night going around the speedway over the back of the hills here. I might go suss it out and see if that's on tonight. If it is, I'll uh, go down there and check it out and then come back up here and camp. Otherwise, I might just stay around here. But all in all, yeah, it was a good night, really good night. But then I met this guy, the local campsite resident. Yeah. Yeah. Permanent holidays. Like this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was enjoying herself and you fucked it. See <laughs> 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 what I did? No. I lit his fire for him. Hmm. That's good. Cut some wood. Yeah, I saw you over there. Split it for him. Yeah. So he would have gone home tonight. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. I've got smoke. <laughs> Wild movies. <laughs> Look, old. Wild movie. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that, bro. You like that stuff, man? Yeah, it's a little bit of it. Not a yeah. huge amount, but... Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love that. Right, eh? Uh, Enjoy. Did I bring wide out? Nah, you didn't bring anything. You just brought your beer. Huh? Do you want a pie? Come and save me a <laughs> Will do, mate. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> oh. Christ. Jesus Christ. The people you meet. <laughs> when we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright
I've been itching for some four-wheel drive tracks. I thought I'd attempt this, but I don't know. Stuck my nose into it and it was more boggy than it seemed and I don't really want to be winching today. Or doing any damage, so probably go around. But little did I know, the winch would get a workout anyway. Actually, I can't remember if I filmed it or not, but I did the stick check. Checked it was all right. Didn't feel too deep. It felt like the base was hard, but as soon as I got into that mud, it just sunk. Went a lot deeper than what I felt on the stick. So, the um, yeah, it got bogged down. I did prep the winch prior, as you probably saw. Um, so I was able to get out and hook that up nice and quickly. You can see the watermark actually went up over the, the door seals, but luckily, seals in these things are awesome water there but not inside so lucky but yeah it pays to be ready unfortunately when I got in there my winch was playing up I was trying to get the uh, rope to come in but it wasn't actually moving so I don't know if it's an electrical thing or what it is but whatever it is I'm gonna have to get it fixed but the funds are full driving I've had my dose I think I can get out of here now <laughs> so currently in Narrowong Flora Reserve this is um reserve that's just in behind uh, where I was camping. Um, I'm gonna go down and have a look at Portland today um, and then there's a state forest that I want to go have a look at. Um, it's a little bit further north. Looks like there's some caves and stuff you can go and explore so I'm gonna venture up that way. But um, yeah I thought I'd, I was driving past this Narrowong Flora Reserve. It's normally closed like a lot of the high country. Um, it's closed um, same time of year, can't remember what weekend it starts, but it finishes after cut weekend, so it's only just opened again. But um, yeah, going down here and having a bit of a look. Scenery's changed a fair bit. It's um, kind of given off a little bit of uh, big desert vibes, but yeah, we'll go have a bit of a look around here and then make our way down to Portland again. See what we find. And then you come up to stuff like that. Now, it's black sand, it's muddy. I don't even want to attempt it. I'm gonna take the chicken track around to the right hand side there. Still looks like I need to engage four low, but yeah, we'll have a bit of a go with that. So close, but no cigar. I uh, attempted to put both lockers in, but for some reason something, it seems like it's caught up on something. So I think what I'm gonna do here is get out some Max Tracks. And I seem to be, I think I'm hitting the sump at the front here. So if I get some Max Tracks out, I'll put one there, one there, maybe even one under that back wheel and see if that doesn't help.
next up was Portland. sense now. I understand why this is called Portland. Because it's a port. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> After an awesome beachside camp, we made our way down Norman Waite Scenic Drive and found ourselves exploring the enchanted forest. And then you come out and there's a field of giant hair dryers. The south end of Portland is absolutely beautiful. The wind farms with the cliffs and the ocean is absolutely spectacular. All the way along this drive, you see massive cliffs with surf breaking across the rocks at the bottom. It's absolutely epic. Now I bumped into a local that was walking his dog down where I was camping last night and he was giving me all these pointers of different places to go and he told me that there's a bunch of caves because all of Portland's like um, volcanic there's a whole bunch of caves and just cool formations from, from obviously the volcanoes he was telling me that there's this bats reserve place that you can actually go fully caving I'm not going to do that but I will stick my head in um, and I'm just trying to find it on the um, caves, but look what he's got me driving to. It's pretty fucking cool. All right, this local guy's got me looking for these bat caves. No, I, there's no, it's not really signposted. It is called Bat Reserve. Obviously, I'm guessing it's because there's bat caves here somewhere, but I haven't really found them yet. I found this though. Massive, huge tree. Some kind of water tank. Some old ruins. It's like a little cottage and this is the leftover fireplace or something. All right, so I've Googled it. I've got a longitude and latitude of where these caves are. It looks like I'm gonna park on this track and walk into the bush. So, this is the last time anyone sees me. It's 
been nice snowing you. It's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> All right, so parked up. Then I need to head in that direction over there. Doesn't look like it's too far in from the uh, from the thing, but there's not really a uh, defined track. So we'll go for a bit of a hike, see if I can find where it's saying to go on the GPS, and then uh, if we don't find anything. Been a total waste of time. This isn't eerie at all. Completely fine with this. <laughs> Alrighty. This looks as though it could be a bat cave. Mum, if you're watching, I know you're petrified of bats. Look away. Holy hell. It's freaking huge. Can't even see the bottom. That is seriously cool. I need to drop something down there. Let me see if I can find a rock. See how we go. Let's try it again. Yeah, right. I can hear it hit the bottom, but... Jesus. I'm not sure if you can hear that on the camera. I'll say now when, when this rock hits the bottom, okay? Now. Jesus. Bit of a drop. People actually go down there. There's talk of people like tying off the off the tree just there, going down into this thing. There's no way in hell I'd be going down there. Anyway, pretty cool. I thought they were gonna be caves that I might have been able to poke my head in, but I'm not uh, not poking my head in that one. I might fall in. <laughs> well, that, uh, that was a little bit underwhelming. It uh, wasn't quite what I was expecting. But um, still cool nonetheless. It's all, it's always cool to come find this, these things, see them for yourselves. Obviously, it's not somewhere that a lot of people go. People actually do go down into that cave, which is pretty nuts. Um, I don't have the equipment or the skill to do that, and I'd probably end up falling down and breaking my neck. So yeah, I'm gonna give that one a miss, I think. But what do you reckon, Ali? Should we go find some camp? Set up the penthouse? Call it an early night. Thanks for your input. All right, let's do it. So, camp tonight, Mount Richmond National Park. I see having some leftover dinner. It's actually just starting to rain, so I think we will probably go to bed and watch a movie, I think. So I've uh, been driving along this uh, old deserted railway, you can see it's been here for a while, trees have even grown up through it, and I stumbled across this little gem, how cool is this? Pretty cool. Obviously this train line isn't being used anymore and this is just an old tunnel, but how cool is that? It's uh, Wednesday, just found another camp. This one's actually on a beautiful river. people down there kayaking. It's another Vic Parks one, so I've got this whole section here. It's, it says it sleeps up to six people in tents and vehicles. I've got this whole section for $15, like a lot of the other Vic Parks ones, but you just need a pre-book. I did have to drive up the road to find reception, but um, yeah, found it in the end. But for now, I'm gonna go down there on the jetty and have a beer and chill with Ali. Pritchard's camp. Not a bad little find. Definitely going in for a swim. Yeah, bloody beautiful. And finally the sun's out for once, so 
this is probably where I'll finish this episode. Uh, it's Wednesday, uh, as I said before. Um, we're getting close to the South Australia border. We're not quite there yet. I reckon maybe another day or two and we'll end up getting there. Um, pretty excited to hit up Robe or Beachport to Robe. I'm going to do it backwards. A lot of people do it the other way around, but because I'm heading that direction just makes sense. So yeah, pretty excited to do that. Um, doing it solo, have to be careful. Beach driving, never done it before, but we'll see how we go. But hope you're enjoying the show. And yeah, if you'd like and subscribe it, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, had a really good response from the first one. Pretty stoked. A lot of people interested in what I'm up to, so that's really cool. Thanks. Cheers, guys. <laughs>